Joining me in the studio from the city of Monmouth, we do have Mayor Rod Davies. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, Vanessa. Also with us, Ken Helms, Communications Director. Good morning. And with us as well as Lou Steinbrecher, who is the City uh, Administrator. Good morning, Lou. Good morning, Vanessa. Good to see you all. How was last night's City Council meeting? Well, it was a pretty full agenda. Had a lot of things going on. Um, first thing we started off with was um, some firefighter special awards. Chief Rex wrote, uh, uh, recognized uh, some of our guys. Uh, Ken, you want to maybe... Sure. Fill, fill that in for yeah. us. Yeah. Um, Chief Rec recognized uh, Assistant Chief Spears and uh, Captain Armstrong uh, with Meritorial Service Awards. Uh, what those were for, uh, they've done a lot of uh, oh, changing uh, software upgrades, uh, a bunch of different stuff uh, to kind of help uh, the department uh, get better training, uh, more consistent, um, track some different things, uh, do uh, vehicle maintenance, uh, a number of different small items that really uh, help daily life out at the uh, fire station um, and help bring uh, their quality of services uh, to, a, to a whole new level. So uh, Chief Rector talked about that and uh, yeah, they, they got their awards. Yeah, watch the uh watched that last night so congratulations to assistant chief pat spears and captain ryan armstrong and i will say folks if you're wanting to uh to watch the city council meetings and kind of know what's going on uh, it's a very good setup very clear you can hear mm -hmm. the audio and you can see everybody and uh, it's really a nice job uh, ken that you've done kind of really facilitating mm -hmm. cameras audio so people can actually uh, view city council meetings yeah we uh we just recently uh upgraded a lot of the technology that was in there so now we have multiple cameras uh, multiple angles and some high quality mics in there uh, that was one of the things that we heard um, a, a lot of citizen feedback on was uh, the quality of the audio specifically. Uh, we were having a hard time. Uh, that, that chamber was never designed uh, for streaming. Uh, you know, it was just, it was in use before that was uh, really a, a technology that was widely deployed. So uh, now we have to use multiple cameras and yeah, we've got it. Uh, it's available on our Facebook page. It's also available on our city website. Uh, it's under our Facebook stream, so you don't have to have a Facebook account to be able to watch it. Okay, great. What's next? Uh, we actually had the two director's reports after that. Uh, we had our building and zoning report that Director Clark gave. Uh, he kind of gave an update on some of the different projects uh, that have been going on uh, in town. Uh, the town <coughs> the townhomes is probably uh, the major one uh, that we always have people asking about, and uh, that's pretty much near completed. Um, they've got a couple different things uh, that they're – uh, redoing as far as uh, with infrastructure buttoning up uh, but they do have I uh, believe half of the units uh, that are filled right now um, still have a wait list um, yeah. that, that's been a pretty successful project there uh, and then he's issuing a lot of uh, junk and debris and uh, mowing uh, citations as well that's one of the important things uh, you know as we're going into summer the rain starting to happen uh, you know grass is growing uh, there is a city ordinance that cannot go uh, above 12 inches uh, if if it does there's legal means that we start uh, going after at that point point. Um, and the first stop after uh, you receive a letter and a citation for it is uh, the city crews come over and mow the yard and I can tell you that there's probably uh, basically every other contractor in town that does uh, yard mowing is going to be cheaper than if we have to send guys there. Um, so you kind of want to get that buttoned up before um, the city has to take action on that um, just just because of the costs that are involved there and your neighbors are going to love you. Um, if yeah. You do that, so. I saw that he was uh, discussing uh, how many letters were sent out, but also for junk and debris. What mm -hmm. is that about? Um, uh, one of the best examples I think most people can relate to is uh, they've all drove by uh, houses at different times throughout the years uh, that may, for instance, have a couch sitting out in the front yard. Um, you know, just some kind of junk that needs to be uh, removed and uh, it's, it's just kind of sitting out there. Um, that, that's the kind of things um, that they do for enforcement. Uh, we have ordinances that prohibit uh, junk and debris from just sitting out there. So. Yeah, we uh, they pick uh, pick up large items on the third uh, pickup uh, week of the month, and uh, also it's it uh, it seems challenging that we can't simply pick up the 
junk and debris and paper and items out of their yard, put it in the garbage can and roll it to the curb every week. That seems to be a challenge for some of our residents and we get um, weekly phone calls from neighbors. And, you know, that's really a big piece of our enforcement is when neighbors, you know, it starts infringing upon neighbors' ability and, uh, you know, to be out and enjoy their property because of uh, the unsightliness of of things going on across the street, for example, uh, and, you know, when all it would take is a little bit of effort uh, to pick it up, clean it up, and put it out on the curb. <laughs> okay. So our zoning department is uh, almost 100% complaint driven. So if your neighbor uh, complains on something on your property, um, you know, or if a complaint comes from a constituent to an elected official, um, that then gets uh, assigned to staff. Uh, that that's the number one way uh, that that stuff is, is corrected. Um, of course, there's always a chance of driving by, seeing it, um, you know, a staff member, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but for the most part, it is complaint driven. And just as a reminder to anybody who's listening, uh, like Mayor Davies said, uh, the third trash pickup uh, day of every month, uh, they do have the ability to put out one bulk item. So if you have a uh, couch, a chair, um, anything like that. You can put out one of them per month, and uh, Lakeshore Recycling will pick that up. Uh, that was one of the benefits that the city did um, when the new trash pickup uh, schedules and vendor uh, were negotiated. So okay. uh, no more cleanup week, uh, but you don't have to hold it throughout the year waiting for that cleanup week. Okay. So, then after that, we had the uh, public works uh, report that Director Jackson gave. Uh, there's been a couple different uh, projects that have been going on. Uh, they did complete another water softener vessel uh, refurbishment at our north water treatment plant. Uh, they're basically just giant water softeners, uh, but they've been in service for over 10 years now. Um, they do start to see corrosion, different things like that, so we're having to go through and refurbish each one uh, and make sure that they're not springing leaks. Uh, we've had a couple of them that do that, so that's definitely going to be a good capital uh, investment to keep the water running, keep the demand up. So, okay. Uh, and we also finished a, uh, the putting on the variable frequency drives on our high service pumps uh, so that there, uh, the old pumps would start and stop immediately and these new uh, startup uh, devices help the motors to start slowly and sh and shut off slowly and uh, uh, it saves a lot of electricity in fact Ameren uh, paid for about 50 percent of the cost uh, of this project to um, as energy savings uh, both to the city and to Ameren uh, and also th that we learned in recent studies that by slowing the startup of our high service pumps it will reduce the pressure on the water mains uh, hopefully reducing the amount of breakages we experience that way so uh, s slowing down that amp buildup of pressure should help uh, everybody's uh, service in the mains okay and then the uh, city council considered and approved a uh, professional services agreement to uh, with a uh, qualified uh, planning consultant um, <clears throat> by uh, it's a, a firm uh, um, by by the name of uh, Civic Solutions. It's uh, headed up by a fellow named Mark Rothert, Rothert who is uh, uh, a uh, uh, economic development professional who does uh, uh, economic planning uh, for communities <clears throat> and. Uh, uh, about this time last year, the city responded to a notice of funding opportunity uh, from the uh, Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. We applied for a $68,000 grant under the RISE uh, planning program that they have, planning grant program. RISE stands for Research in Illinois to Spur Economic Recovery. And this, these are federal funds that uh, uh, are available to uh, local communities to develop economic recovery plans to help businesses and the community accelerate uh, the economic recovery from the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And um, we were fortunate uh, 
In September uh, 14th of last year, we were uh, notified that we were awarded a $68,000 grant. It has taken us several months since September of last year to finally get the grant agreement from the state. Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, bureaucratic paperwork associated with many of the grants that we get, and, and delays are uh, obviously uh, prevalent throughout throughout this process. But anyways, we uh, we were able to receive the grant agreement here just recently, which allowed us to go ahead and um, move forward uh, with um, hiring the consultant to do the plan. So the council did approve that. Um, Mark should be here in the community over the next few months. He'll start planning uh, right away. We'll be meeting with the city council and also uh, hopefully the um, Maple City Area Partnership, our, uh, that the private uh, public pri uh, partnership that we've created here locally to focus on economic development here in the Monmouth community. So uh, he'll be here through the the next few months and we hope to have that uh, uh, economic recovery plan put together by um, by uh, October of, the, of this year so uh, and then we had two <clears throat> we had two bids recently that were received uh, for improvements at the municipal airport um, the uh, first one was uh, actually being administered by the uh, Illinois Department of Transportation and that is for the uh, uh, construction of a new entrance road and a uh, parking lot um, at the um, out at the airport. That's the uh, west side uh, with the fire that took place a few years ago with the old hangar on the east side. Our uh, long-term plan for the airport was to have to move it anyways over to the west side, and that's what uh, we were able to to accomplish. And now we're looking at uh, two different bids. Again, one to improve the entrance way and create a, a parking lot. Uh, that will uh, that that uh, bid will be like I said administered by the uh, um, by by the uh, Illinois Department of Transportation Aeronautics Division. The uh, low bid was um, uh, was uh, Gun Gunther, uh, and they will uh, uh, be looking at uh, a total price of about two hundred twenty-eight thousand to put in. Uh, with asphalt, the uh, entranceway and the parking lot. It also includes uh, extension of a water main and um, installation of a hydrant uh, near the uh, new hangar as well. Okay. Um, and then uh, the other one was the um, uh, was the asphalt area around the hangar, so that we can have easy access to those uh, units on the backside. And that one uh, is a local let. Uh, that is. Uh, uh, through uh, the low bidder on that one was was Brandt Construction, and uh, that would include uh, again an asphalt a paving around there. Both of these projects are ninety percent funded with uh, the, the state of Illinois Department of Transportation uh, funds. So uh, only ten percent of the total cost will actually be borne by the uh, by the city. So. Uh, council approved both of those uh, bids. One obviously is being administered by us, the local bid, and then uh, uh, authorization to enter into an agreement with the uh, uh, Illinois Department of Transportation Aeronautics to um, put together the um, um, the uh, the other bid for for the road entrance. So I think that hangar yep. access payment, Lou, was. Uh, Brandt's bid was like one hundred ninety thousand. Yeah, I feel uh, seven hundred ninety-eight dollars, something like that. So, that's uh, again that we had two bidders, Brandt and Gunther, on that one as well. So, uh, and then um, with that, we needed to have a uh, professional services agreement or engineering services agreement with Hanson, who is our airport engineer, to uh, do the construction inspection and. Um, uh, the uh, contract administration portion of that for us. So council approved both of those uh, actions as well last night. Okay. Um, also, um, we had um, Jennifer Berger here, uh, an engineer with Woodard and Curran, uh, to talk with uh, council about uh, uh, the lead service inventory contract. Uh, we received a, uh, a grant uh, to help us pay for the uh, uh, as part of the our mandated uh, lead service line uh, compliance program we have to take an inventory of all lead service lines and uh, uh, 
in in the city, and we have to begin developing a plan to have those removed over the next uh, ten or so years. And so, uh, they are uh, Woodard and Kern is going to administer uh, and conduct that inventory. Uh, and again, this grant that we received will be used to pay for that uh, work. Um, the other. Uh, agreement we worked on uh, or with Woodard and Kern is the nutrient assessment reduction plan. That's part of our wastewater treatment plant permitting process with the Illinois EPA. Uh, as part of that, uh, we have a mandate to um, evaluate and explain and, and do a study to understand uh, the cost and uh, both capital cost and operating cost for reducing the nutrients from our wastewater treatment discharge uh, lower than it already is. Um, I think there's uh, something like 30 contribution points uh, to our uh, wastewater watershed area. Uh, Monmouth is the only one with a nutrient limit and our nutrient discharge limit is one and we are currently below one. We're at 0 0.7, 0 0.6, point. Uh, seven five at various times and uh, so we are in compliance and so, but uh, they are requiring us to study how much we could reduce it further we felt like communities like Gelsberg and a lot of other contributors to that uh, watershed uh, should get to our level before we have to do any more because we we spent uh, 17 million dollars building a new wastewater treatment plant and uh, FOSS removal plant uh, was another several million dollars. And it's a huge expense to operate and do that FOSS removal every single day. And so, uh, you know, we, we've done our part and we feel that, uh, and we are also dealing with our mandate for a complete disinfection of all discharge. And again, that's something that we're doing that other contributors to that watershed are not. Uh, but uh, again, that's part of our permitting process, so we will be in compliance and we will follow those directives and uh, make our case uh, that we're doing our fair share. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, anything else? Uh, we just had one more item uh, that was approving a mutual aid agreement for the fire department. Uh, that's through Mabus uh, mutual aid box alarm system. Uh, that is. Uh, something that Illinois has, uh, although it does kind of stretch some of the surrounding states that decide that they want to participate in it. Uh, that's one of the a very successful program uh, that started uh, decades ago within Illinois uh, in the fire service. Um, like I said, very successful. What it is is it allows uh, these departments to call on other departments to get uh, assets, uh, whether that's uh, manpower, whether that's tankers, um, different equipment. Uh, to come and assist during these large fire scenes uh, that they have. Uh, the direct benefit that you see, uh, for instance, here in, in Monmouth with the residents is uh, we don't have to have all that huge uh, equipment that you would normally have to have um, because there is the ability to call on other departments to bring that in. Um, same for the staffing, things like that. Um, so. Uh, they keep what, what they uh, need, and then there's always available assets otherwise. Uh, this mutual aid agreement has been the same since 1988, so this is just an update on it. Okay. I appreciate the updates, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thank you. That is Ken Helms, Communications Director, Lou Steinbrecher, City Administrator, and Mayor Rod Davies on 1330 WRAM.